Now for this question, this is very typical kind of question that you can see in most textbooks where you've got to prove this particular formula for a particle which is projected from a point O with a speed of U at an angle alpha to the horizontal. And we've got this equation then which gives us a link for its position xy at time t. So how do we prove this particular result? Well, as I say, you can generally find this in most textbooks, but I'll run through it for you. Make sure you learn the technique though, because uh, it's often missed out, I find, with uh, students. So let's just have a look at how we're going to do it. Well, when you look at the equation here, what we haven't got is the time t in it. And yet, the horizontal motion, which will give us x, and the vertical motion, which will give us y, will both have equations that have t in it. And that's what we're going to eliminate by using simultaneous equations. So we start by looking at the horizontal motion. So we'll just write this down here. Uh, we'll just say consider the horizontal motion. I always believe in having subtitles so that anybody reading it hopefully can understand where we're going with this. So if we consider the horizontal motion, we need to split this speed into two components. We've got one in the horizontal sense that way and one in the vertical sense that way. Now the one in the horizontal sense is going to be u cos alpha. And the one in the vertical sense, because it doesn't contain the angle alpha, will be u sine alpha. Let's just squeeze it in there, u sine alpha. Now when it comes to the horizontal motion, because the acceleration due to gravity just acts vertically, at perpendicular to the direction that we're considering, we should already uh, appreciate that this speed then stays constant. So we can use the distance equals speed times time. So if it covers a distance x, we know that the speed is u cos alpha, and the time taken is, let's say, t. t to get to this point here. Now knowing that t is going to be used in the vertical motion, we're going to need to make t the subject from here. So if I divide both sides by u cos alpha, we end up with t equaling x divided by u cos alpha. Okay, so we now look at the vertical motion, we'll just come down here. And so again, we'll have a little subtitle and we'll say consider the vertical motion. Now we've got the acceleration due to gravity acts in the vertical sense. So we need to consider a SUVAT-based equation, S-U-V-A-T. And we'll take upwards, which I'd always recommend, the initial direction of projection as being in the positive sense. So S, the displacement, is going to be Y. So we've got that in there u, the initial velocity, well that's going to be u sine alpha. So I'll put that in there as u sine alpha. And v, the final velocity, well don't know that when it's at this point here. So I'm not really interested in that, so we can forget about that. Acceleration, well that's acting downwards in the opposite sense to what we've got there, so that's going to be minus g. And as for the time t, well, it's at this point then at time t. So we're looking for an equation that doesn't have the v in it. So what's it got to be? Well, when we go through our list of equations, the one that we're going to need is, and I'll put here using, it'll be s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So if we now, knowing that t is this value here, 
we can substitute that into this equation along with these variables. So what do we have? Well, we have that therefore for s we've got y, so we've got y equals u, u is u sine alpha, so we've got u sine alpha, put that in brackets there, times t, t we know is x over u cos alpha, so x over u cos alpha, so that's that part done, ut, and then plus a half multiplied by the acceleration, which is negative g, times t squared. So that's x over u cos alpha, u cos alpha, and that is all squared. So what have we got? Well, you can see that the u's cancel out here, and sine alpha over cos alpha, well, that's the tan alpha. So we've got x tan alpha. And when it comes to this term, you can see we've got minus g x squared over 2. And on the bottom here, we've got u squared cos squared alpha. So we therefore get this result that y equals x tan alpha minus gx squared all over 2u squared cos squared alpha. All right. It's also worth mentioning at this point, actually, that sometimes you see an alternative to this formula. I've seen, for instance, this term here written as gx squared sec squared alpha, okay, sec squared alpha, because it is the same as 1 over cos squared alpha. So be aware of that. You can get y equals x tan alpha minus gx squared sec squared alpha all over 2u squared. But you'd still follow exactly the same principle. All right.